What is going on, YouTube family? What's up? Sorry, I don't have anything set up right now. I am. <laughs> I need to turn on my lights and everything. How have y'all been? It's been crazy, okay? All right. So, without further ado, um, we'll get started. But, um, y'all, you know, everybody already knows what we've been doing. Uh, TikTok videos and shorter videos. You know, for the attention span of those who are not so, you know, who don't have the largest attention spans, which thank you so much, AC, you helped me out with that, um, and um, so that's one of the things we've been focusing on, okay, just so that you all are aware of that. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Question. I'm divorcing my wife. Power is in my name. Can I just have the power turned off while she lives at the house? She's in my home, but the power is, she's in the home, but the power is in my name. Can I have it disconnected? Okay, y'all, this is a very good question, okay? So let's go. We're going to come to the court. We're going to take him to the court of our public opinion. First, I'm going to give you my public opinion. Sir, you should know the answer to that question. Now, legally, can you or not? We'll get to that in a moment. But whether or not it's the right thing to do, I mean, you glaze past whether or not you have children there, whether or not you know that she can get this power in her name, whether or not she is an at stay at home mother, what money she would have to pay the power. These are questions that you need to be answering yourself. And so, with respect to morals, you would have your own answer, okay? You know whether or not you should be doing something that don't make no sense. That's rude. That could be disrespectful. That could harm someone. It's hot outside, especially here in Texas. I don't know where you are, but I think you're in Texas. Sir, anyhow, legally, sir, she can file paperwork to stop you, but if there's no paperwork stopping you, you can do that, sir. But, you know, whenever you're filing for divorce, depending on whether or not this is going to be a, you know, thing where, you know, you guys are going to be fighting, whether it's going to be contested, whether she's going to get an attorney or not, things that you do may have, you know, may come back on you. So you got to think about what you're doing. Sorry, guys. Okay. You got to think about what you're doing and how you're treating people when you're getting a divorce from them. Because if certain petitions are filed and the court finds that you wronged that person or that you did something with the intent to be malicious um, or cause damage, the court can and will do something to you about that, okay? So, sir, if, I mean, long story short, there is no order that stops you from doing that, but just be careful what you do, okay? Now, if this is the lease, you're moving out, you guys have long been separated, whatever, then she should be expecting you to like her name. But I don't know what her working situation is. Because, guys, when you're married to somebody, you know, you kind of owe them. It's half community property. And if that person has no job, that you can't just turn stuff off and, and walk out and leave them with nothing. Like, that's not really the way the law works in community property states. So you definitely want to consult an attorney, sir, because we don't know what you're trying to pull, okay? Not to say you're trying to pull anything. I'm not sure. I just don't have enough facts. Okay. Let's move on to the next case. Okay. This is a good one, guys. Let's see if I can answer this. I had a D, and the reason is because it's Florida law. I mean, I can answer it, but whatever. It's long. I had a DCF case open up on me for a dirty urine while I was completing probation. The judge decided to send me to an inpatient, so I decided to place the kids with my mom temporarily while I finished inpatient. Inpatient. So my caseworker put that in my case plan, and I got sent to outpatient. But my mother wanted to move to another state, San Antonio, Texas, with the kids, and I had not yet completed my case plan. I still had quite a bit of things to do, so me and their father signed an agreement to let her get permanent guardianship so she can move my kids to San Antonio, Texas in 2013. I flew out to see them every six months until I moved out here in 2018 where I live with my mom and my kids. Now my kids live with me, just me, and the kids since 2021 for a year, just me and the kids. Everything's going well. I've held down a job. I pay my own rent, but my mom wants to take them back because of a disagreement of her feelings. I know I'm able to take care of them, and I need to know how to get permanent guardianship lifted. Now that I live in a completely different state from where the case was handled, she physically came and took my 13-year-old, but my 15-year-old is still with me. What do I do? Court of Public Opinion. 
girl, first thing you in, you want to do, okay, anytime that you have something going on in your life and something happened in another state, you have to start there. Guys, you can't just go from this state to that state to that. You know there's something going on with Florida because you're bringing it up to me. So, according to my public opinion says, girl, you know you got to start in Florida if that's where the case is, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Now, legally, yes, you start in Florida, and you're going to have to get that trace that case transferred back here to Texas. Seems as if you guys have, uh, Texas can pick up jurisdiction for this particular case because you guys have been here for the required amount of time, okay? But, ma'am, you got to start in Florida. You got to open the case there on a motion to modify, and then you have to file a motion to transfer, stating that the children and all the parties have been in Texas, and then that you need it transferred to Bayer County, which is San Antonio, okay? And the court, I'm sure, is going to grant that. But you're going to have to get your mom served first. Once you file that there, then when it moves down here, Florida's going to take the paperwork and put it down here. Then you're going to have to go for emergency custody. You can't do anything. I mean, unless Florida gives you a TRO. You know, Florida might give you one. So when you file for a modification, ask Florida for emergency, whatever their emergency support is. I mean, strike that emergency custody is. Whether down here we do use a temporary restraining order or temporary orders and switch it real quick. So I, I don't know, you know, exactly what they call it up there, but that's what you're going to need to get. You're going to come on down here, okay, with your case, and then you're going to fight her on this turf. It looks like the children have been living with you long enough to win, but I need to know why she tried to take that, why she took that 13-year-old and why you are pleading your case to me. <laughs> that you can hold down a job and can take care of the kids because that, to me, honey, is very alarming that we are having that conversation because why? No, I didn't ask you that. I didn't ask you that. You offered that up to me, and that lets me know that there's some sort of issue with you possibly living pillar to post, not having jobs, Sticking back into the lifestyle that caused these children to go into your hands to begin with. And that's where your mom took that younger one. And that younger one is a little scared. So she went on. Because she tried to play safe. That's what it seems like. I don't know. I don't know. I, I can't. I'm not the judge of this, of this case. Okay. This is just in the court of my public opinion. But my public opinion and my gut tells me that that's what's going on. Something around, around along those lines. Okay. And, um... Heck, that 15 year old gonna do what she wants to do. It's not right, but the courts, it's hard to maneuver the 15 year old. The court can allow, I mean, can force that 15 year old to stay with that grandmother if they wanna do that. But then if the 15 year old is gonna run away and do things to harm herself in an effort to get back to you, they'll go ahead and give custody nine times out of 10 to you. Um, you didn't hear that from me, but um, yeah, that's how that works. And so, um, you're probably safe with that 15 year old, but that 13 year old, I don't, does she want to go back? Cause she, she's not fighting really. And these kids are old enough to say where they want to live anyway. So you're okay, girl. Just go ahead and file your petition. Okay. But get your life in order. Cause if you're not looking good, the court is going to, first of all, the court is not going to like it. Cause they're going to feel like your mom tried to give you a chance. You're not doing right. And so she wants them back. And then they're going to look at your mom and say, girl, why'd you give them back? This is why you shouldn't have gave them back. You know, so it's both of y'all, in, in my public opinion, in my, in my opinion, the court of my public opinion, public, what do y'all think? Because that's what I think. I think both of y'all are crazy. She shouldn't have gave them kids back. And so now she can't come back, in my opinion, and say, oh, well, you're not fit again. Hell, they grown now almost, man. It's five years for one of them and three for the other one. And I mean, you gave them back, Okay. They old, they're old enough to make an outcry. They have cell phones. They can decide they're not going to come home. They can ask for help. It's things they can do now that they couldn't do when they were younger. But you gave them back. Okay? So we're going to end that right there. Y'all have a fantastic day. Make sure you send in your questions. Booker at BookerLawFirm.com. Put YouTube show in the headings. Some stuff may go to TikTok if it's short and sweet. So also look there and follow me there. Y'all have a good one. Bye.